Hello there. That is a an infrared receiver, not just a detector, but a, a receiver. It's a TSOP three eight two three eight SS one V IR sensor IC thirty eight kilohertz by Viche. It uh, this is not anything new. These have been around a long time. It uh, it detects. Uh, infrared pulses from a remote uh, such as this one and uh, outputs it, it, it uh, strips off the carrier and uh, just outputs uh, digital pulses uh, directly so that you can decode them with your microcontroller and I'll just put some on the scoop here right you can see that there's our data just right out of that receiver and uh, ready to be decoded so let's uh, have a little fun with this thing I've got a this remote is just a uh, hopage uh, just a generic remote that came with an old uh, uh, TV card that I built a myth TV box around uh, some years ago. I never used this remote because I didn't need it at the time. But it, it outputs um, RC5 uh, Manchester encoding it turns out so it should be easy to work with. So let's uh, let's look at those waveforms on the scope and uh, write some uh, some code for uh, an, an MSP430 uh, or an Arduino or something to uh, to decode those and make it do stuff and maybe we'll add some uh, add some remote control capability to some thing that didn't have it before just for fun now since we're working with uh, <clears throat> with Manchester encoding there's some things to remember about uh, how it's uh, how it's transmitted when you read it now I can send a remote signal in. This is the, the number one on the keypad here. And uh, it just looks like a square wave, just in a regular series of square wave pulses coming in until you get to the end. Alright, so let's go back to the beginning. First we start with, well first remember that this uh, receiver is going to invert everything. So although this looks like this is this is five volts here, this is ground. The thing is active low. So this edge, this first edge here, is where the scope triggers. Let me turn this light out. Let's see if that's better. Ah, okay. <clears throat> this uh, this first falling edge is where the scope first triggers, and uh, this is going to be represented as a one instead of a zero. So remember, everything's everything's backwards. So we're looking for at uh, this this string of data we've got a, uh, a the first thing we get is two start pulses that are always high and then a toggle pulse a toggle bit um, I'll tell you what that's for a little bit later but alright this first change zoom uh, this first edge is our first bit it goes high All right now Manchester encoding is actually taking up this whole uh, series here, this whole um, pulse uh, from the high to low. These, these transitions are the only things that matter and in Manchester encoding the data is represented by a change in the middle of a pulse. So the first edge we get is the first bit of data. That's a one. Alright, and then we skip this one and then we start counting again at this one this one falls from in, in the case of this receiver falls from high to low this is another one so there's a one and another one and then just like we skipped this transition before we're gonna skip this one that's missing out of this wide pulse here All right there should be you know if uh, the, the timing is the same all the way through this thing so there should be a transition there if it was going to change states but it's not so 
from, from the start, we've got our one start bit, another high for a start bit, then it doesn't transition there, but we skip that and we count this one, and that transitions to low. This is the toggle bit that goes from high to low uh, and helps the, uh, the decoder synchronize. Okay. And we skip that one in the middle. There's another transition from, let's, let's say this is a one. It's inverted, remember. We skip that, and we count this next one, which is another one. Skip that one, another one, skip that one, another one. Now we have, we skip that one, here's another edge, and that's a zero, and then another, uh, another, we skip the one in the middle, here's another one, and another zero, another zero, and there's a one, another one, alright, and that's the end of it, so you've got 14 bits. So from back from the start, you've got your one, two address bits, or excuse me, start bits, two start bits, they're always high. You've got your uh, uh, toggle bit to help th get things started. And then you've got five address bits uh, for putting uh, multiple devices together on the same remote. They can, they your remote can address each one individually right and then you have six command bits that, that just that sends out a hex code for what commands to execute and that's these right here it's a bunch of zeros followed by a one and I'm pressing the one button on the remote and it just so happens that RC5 gives you a direct uh, for, for one through nine gives you a direct binary least significant bit to most significant bit of uh, binary representation of the number you're pressing. So a three looks like that. Here's the least significant bit of a one. Skip that one and another one. That's so that's one and two equals three. And then it transitions again to a bunch of zeros. Uh, let's try five, All right? So that looks a little different from the least significant bit there. There's a one. Skip that one. That's a zero. Skip that one. There's a one. Skip that one. It's a zero. And just zeros. So. You got different uh, different codes like that just in these last six bits that describe the uh, command you want to execute. So all we have to do is decode the string, pay attention to the start bits and the toggle bits. Toggle bit is interesting. Let me talk about that a second. Watch. Uh, I'm going to press the same button just back to back. Um, note the the wide pulse here where the toggle bit is, press that same button again, it changes. The toggle bit flip-flops back and forth with uh, every other button press. It doesn't change the data that follows it, it doesn't change the start bits, but it tells the receiving unit that you've pressed the button twice, or pressed the button and then pressed the button again. Right now I'm just holding down the button and it's, it sends out a, a string of commands every time, but if you lift up on the button and change, it toggles that bit from high to low, high to low, high to low, every other time. So the device knows to behave differently on another discrete button press rather than just holding the button down. So all we've got to do is pay attention to that toggle bit. We've got to look for these two start bits, one, one, pay attention to what state the toggle bit's in if we want to act accordingly and then look at these last six bits. We can ignore the address for now, the address bits, the five address bits in the middle for now because we aren't going to 
uh, set up multiple devices yet, but um, we just get the, the binary number out of these last six bits and make our, the pins on our micro do something with that. So this is uh, this is just pulled down off of Wikipedia, uh, illustrating the uh, the timing of the RC5 protocol. And here's uh, the important thing for us: this 889 microseconds for each half pulse. Okay, so add those together for. An entire pulse duration is 1778 microseconds and here's what we were looking at on the oscilloscope something like that two start bits toggle bit the five address bits for the device you're talking to and six command bits so with that in mind this the timing we need there uh, those two 889 microsecond half pulses All right. look at our requirements for some code to get this done IR decoding requirements number one we need uh, an IO pin listening to the, uh, the infrared receiver and uh, set an interrupt flag when it sees a, uh, a pulse come in the first pulse the start pulse we know is going to be high uh, the first two are going to be high all the time, actually. And um, we'll just uh, set an interrupt flag when we see that come in. Next, uh, we'll have a timer, uh, and it needs to throw an interrupt uh, at a certain interval. We'll get back to that in a second. Uh, number three, timer interval of 1778 microseconds. You saw where that comes from. Number four, we want to sample the I.O. pin at each timer interval so we're going to resample the uh, the IO pin from that uh, that has the receiver on it every 1778 microseconds and uh, see so number five store serial IO for later use we're just going to pull each one of those bits in stack them up until we have the complete message and then uh, we'll do something with it observe toggle bit state uh, so we can distinguish a uh, uh, the auto repeat of a, a button that's held down as opposed to a distinct button press press a button let up press the same button again that toggle bit will bounce back and forth so we know that that's what the user has done instead of just holding the button down seven we're going to trigger some events with uh, with those commands. We'll, we'll get the command, we'll figure out what command was issued and then we'll do something with it. Alright, so we're going to use timer 0 in this chip. I've got a, an MSP430 G2211. It's just the cheap one that came in the launch pad. It's got a single timer and uh, is is more than capable of doing this so we're going to use the timer in up mode which means this, this is what it looks like uh, if you can picture this we're going to the timer is going to start counting at zero it's just going to start counting up and this register uh, timer a uh, capture compare register zero we're going to put a value of 1777 in that register. That means in up mode, timer zero is going to start at zero. It's going to count up to 1777 and then it's going to overflow. It's going to drop back down, reset to zero. Each time it does that, it's going to set an interrupt flag. So it's going to count up, hit the threshold, set an interrupt flag, reset to zero, count back up, reset to zero, another interrupt flag, and so on, so on, so on, until we tell it to stop. So that 1777 is the zero-based uh, time we need for 1778 microseconds. 
assuming that our um, our uh, system clock is set at or very close to one megahertz we may have to adjust that because I'm not going to use a crystal I'm just going to use the internal oscillator which should be good enough as long as we can get close enough to one megahertz uh, without a crystal then that number should be good enough to do this so here's here's our pulse train coming in from the remote uh, or excuse me from the IR receiver uh, IO interrupt right here the start bit comes in the first start bit comes in goes high our IO port will make uh, we'll set that up to throw an interrupt right there uh, that start point will trigger uh, trigger the interrupt and in that interrupt handler uh, for the I.O. port we'll turn on our timer and it'll start counting hit this uh, threshold it'll throw its own interrupt at this time and uh, that's when we'll read our next pulse okay and then uh, while we're doing that the timer is counting up still the timer resets, counts up, hits the threshold, resets to zero, throws another interrupt, and we're here, 1778 microseconds later. Sample the, the next pulse, sample it again right there, and keep on going. Another interrupt right there, sample it right there. So we've got our start pulse is a one, another one, another one, that one is zero, at this, uh, at this uh, period right here, that's a one. At that period, we got another one, another one, another one. So, that's all we're going to have to do to get this set up. Okay, there's my little launch pad board with the chip on it. And uh, just a little jumble of circuits. Here's my hello. There's my IR receiver. That guy right there. And it's uh, the hookup for that is super simple. Just uh, VCC ground and out. All right. And we'll take that out to uh, the green wire. There is a pin on our launch pad. And the other wires are just uh, the power and ground. We've got our USB plugged in. I've got our remote right here, and I want to I want to show you. Uh, I won't do a big code walkthrough. I've got it on the on my website. You can download it there. It's commented all the hell and gone. Uh, so you can take a look at it if you're interested in seeing how it works. But uh, I've got the uh, the program loaded in a debugger and uh, a breakpoint set such that we can examine that number there, the, the big binary number at the top. That's where we're storing our data that we're capturing. So we'll just, let's say, uh, let's say I press 4 on the remote, we're going to see that number the the debugger is going to pause the program and we will uh, see that number populate with a value in it okay here we go I'm gonna press number four All right now the execution is halted and we can see we've got looking at the the last six digits there zero zero one so that's one two and four there's our four the others are you know the, the last six are the command the five in the middle are the address there's our two start bits and our toggle bit I'll uh, restart the program and hit four again and watch what happens to that toggle bit okay four You can see just hitting hitting the same key again gives me a high on that toggle bit because my command is the same. Let's try a 
nine. Yep, and there's eight and one is nine. So we can take those commands now that we know what button was pushed and uh, assign actions to them in our interrupt handler. So you can see, see I got a couple of lights there. I got a red, red light and a green light. And I've got this little cassette player. I think it's a cassette player motor. Some old crappy motor I've got. Uh, so the motor is on uh, button seven. If I, if I press seven, we'll toggle that motor on and off. The two lights there are, let's see, number one is the green one, so I'll hit one on the remote. Right, so number one on the remote gives me my green light toggle on and off. And I've got uh, a little catch in the code that watches that toggle bit so I can hold that button down and it's not going to flash the light, it just it debounces it essentially just toggles it on and off with each button press if you hold it down nothing happens so this is uh, button zero for the red light button one for the green light and with any luck button seven kicks that motor on seven turns it off so you can just play with your goofy little lights and motor and lights and So there we go. I wanted to do a, uh, I got PWM control with the, I don't know, with the, the up and down arrows on there. Uh, have, uh, have one of these pins do PWM and vary the duty cycle up and down to make a motor go slower or faster uh, by infrared remote and be kind of fun. but. The uh, this particular chip, the 2211, there only has one timer in it, and you need, you know, that my timer is being used for decoding the uh, infrared signal. We need another one to do PWM, so I'll have to switch out to a different chip and try that again. Anyway, hope you like that. I'd like to do something um, practical, or maybe even uh, not so practical with this. Um, my wife suggested I hook it up to the blender or, or some goofy kitchen appliance, a toaster or something that was never intended to have and really doesn't make sense to have infrared remote on uh, just because we can. So I don't know if uh, I've also thought I've got a table saw. I could have infrared remote for a table saw or uh, just a fan or a lamp or something like that. So if you've got any uh, interesting kooky ideas uh, leave them in the uh, in the comments below, and uh, maybe we'll give them a go. Go to uh, jerrypalmer.com, and you'll find a uh, a page where this code is posted. If you want to take it and do something with it, try it your own self. And uh, if you found this useful, give me a give me a thumbs up. Thanks very much.